Alright guys, this is my first Let's Play, and today we're playing through Pentiment. Now, this is a dialogue-heavy historical RPG, so it's right up my alley. Um, starting out, you gotta erase these pretty drawings using a rock. Or whatever that is. Um, so, I played through about the first hour or so before this, but didn't get too far, so most of this will be a new experience for me. Um... Fair warning, this game has a ton of obscure names and esoteric vocabulary, so I will be butchering some names, but don't crucify me for it. Right away you can see what a cool art style this game has. Uh, it's all based off of medieval manuscripts. This is a game that Josh Sawyer has been trying to make since the early 90s, back when he was at Black Isle. Um, but he finally got it done at Obsidian, like 30 years after he conceptualized it, which is really cool. I believe that this had the uh, smallest development team of any game that Obsidian has ever made. It was something like 13 people or something. Alright, Tassing Bavaria, Holy Roman Empire, April 1518. An artist sleeps. An artist's mind. Andreas. And the abbot said to me, Andreas? I need you to finish this commission by the end of April. Beatrice. Isn't that much earlier than you were expecting? Andreas. Yes, he had told me I had until the Ides of May. St. Grobian. Asshole. And he's not going to pay you anymore, is he? He has no appreciation for the cost of your sweat. Socrates. The yield of labor should not be measured in coin, but in personal satisfaction and self-improvement. Personal satisfaction doesn't put much food on the table, though, does it? Prester John. How did you reply to the abbot, Andreas? I told him that it would be done when it was done, sometime before the Ides of May. That's what I like to hear. What's he going to do? Find someone else to finish your work before May? It's true. Making enemies with the abbot may not be wise, but he needs your work. And the doing of work is its own virtue, regardless of what the abbot may think. Despite the abbot's ire, you must endure. Soon you will have finished both the abbot's work as well as your own masterpiece. And then you will return to Nuremberg, where marriage and your new life as a master await you. So words will get underlined with that, that red line every now and then, and uh, you can zoom out and you'll get like a little description of what it actually is. Um, and Nuremberg is the free imperial city of the Holy Roman Empire, major trade center and city of the arts, including printing. Yes, marriage to someone he has never met. Hardly ideal. Well, the alternative is becoming a philosopher. Oh Jesus, then you should definitely get married. Is she pretty at least? The portrait they sent was lovely, but we artists can be flatterers. It is growing late. The wheel of time stops for no man, Andreas. I fear you must leave us. Ah, true, your majesty. Will you visit us again soon? Well, I can't always dream of this place, your majesty. 
Of course. If you are not here tomorrow night, I pray you will be someplace as pleasant. Grobian, please see Andrea safely home. Of course, your majesty. Until next time, Andreas. Until next time, your majesty. Pay no mind to the other fools, Andreas. I never do. Ow. At least I would if they'd stop stepping on my feet. Watch where you're going. They're fools, Andreas. No point in trying to teach them anything. I know old John wants you to endure the abbot's shit, but since I take you home, I get the last word. Don't let him run you ragged, boy. I won't. The abbot can't push me around. That's what I like to hear. Gah! Would you please stop? I give up. Take me home, Grubian. As you wish, Andreas. Good morning, Ursula. Ursula. Good, um, Andor. Time to get up. The Baron. April 15, 18. Quara. Good morning, Andreas. Did you sleep well? Quite well, actually. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Anyway, I know you'll be off to the Abbey, so I packed you some food. Almonds, cheese, and some of the rye you like from the Albans. Otto wanted me to ask you to join him for dinner at the Abbey. And we can zoom out and see what Otto looks like. Otto, stop by? Yes, around dawn. Here you are, Andreas. That's too kind of you, Cora. Many thanks. Master Andreas, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, could I... I mean, could we? Would it be too much trouble if you paid next month's rent today? And if we raised it by two groschen? I hate to ask, but we're running behind on our taxes to the Abbey. Two months behind. Peter's losing his hair over it. Even more than usual, I mean. Of course. It's no problem at all. Besides, we wouldn't want Peter to lose any more of his precious hair. Oh, God bless you, Andreas. And may St. Luke watch over you today. Speaking of St. Luke, how is your masterpiece coming along? It's been two months now, hasn't it? Slowly, I'm afraid. Most of my days are spent doing work for the Abbey. It's only during the Divine Office that Prior Frenric has allowed me to work on my masterpiece. And Divine Office is the prayer times observed by all Christian monastic orders. Monks and nuns pray together seven times a day and once at night, as dictated by the rule of St. Benedict. A reasonable restriction, but slow going. The city council doesn't require it to become a master. I'm making it mostly to show clients and for my own sake. 
And yes, when I do finish, I will go back to Nuremberg where I will marry and open a workshop of my own. From Nuremberg to a university, and now traveling the world as an artist. What a life you have ahead of you, Master Andreas. Yes, I suppose it does feel a bit like I'm starting a new chapter of my life after... A little too much fun. It must be rather frightening, starting all over again. It is, but I know that this is what I want to do. Not many people get to decide that. Certainly not anyone in Tassing. Anyway, I don't know anything about art, but I've seen you sketching such beautiful things in your little book. Your masterpiece must be wonderful. It is. It's my finest work. Good. It makes me glad to see some confidence in the men around here sometimes. Now, I have to get back to my own work. Have a good day at the Abbey, Andreas. And we'll see you after Vespers for supper. And Vespers is the monastic hour at dusk, one of the major prayer hours, it is followed by supper. Not tonight, but thank you. Klaus Drucker invited me over for supper. Of course. Please say hello to the Druckers for us. Of course. Until later, Clara. L. Peter. God bless you. Ah. Uh, Andreas. Ah, uh, oh. Yes, Andreas. The weather's been god-awful. This town's gone to shit since my days. I don't think the townsfolk can do much about the weather. Eh. Well, of course they wouldn't know how to do anything now. No one follows the old ways anymore. The old abbot didn't bother us as much about our customs. He didn't mind if we left a little offering to Perchetta to keep the skies clear, the weather fair. And Perchetta is a pagan goddess of the Alps, associated with animals and spinning wool. She is still invoked by some Christians in Austria, Switzerland, Bavaria, and Swabia. Matthias knew that Christ was in our hearts, even if the white lady's name was on our lips. What sort of old customs? The kind that scare away witches and keep spirits from calling storm clouds over our farms. The saints weren't the first to watch over Tassing. My father knew that. Old Rannick Kemper knew that. And Rannick Kemper was the late husband of Otelia. That bastard abbot may not like it, but some of us keep the traditions alive. Like the old widow, Attilia. Yes, yes. She always hangs the door frame with lavender to keep the spirits out. I see. Cough, cough. I should go. Hmm. All right, God bless you. Pretty sure I just got the plague from that guy. Big Yorg. Morning, Andreas. Morning, Big Yorg. How's it going? You working today? Just taking a rest for a bit. Dad's still in the field. He hit a big rock with the plow, and it took me Lord knows how long to pull it out. You off to the Abbey? Every day but Sunday. Right. Thank God for Sundays. Smells like a storm's coming, no? Huh. Just smells like the fresh alpine air to me. 
You've been traveling too much. Where was it you spent your wander yare before you came to Tassing? Wandering years. During which a journeyman artist or craftsman travels far and wide to improve their skills. Alright, and um, I believe that these different options, uh, they change some of your dialogue, they change like some of the translations that you get from certain characters. Um, gonna Gareth Italy. Andreas knows a little Italian, Greek, and can reference cultural touchstones from Florence, Venice, and Milan. Italy. Florence for a while, but Venice and Milan as well. One of the most powerful republics on the Italian peninsula, sitting on the northwest coast of the Adriatic Sea, Venice is a major center for commerce and art in southern Europe. Italy. No wonder your senses are dull. You've been down there too long. Spend enough time in these mountains and you'll be able to smell a storm coming. How long will that take? Mmm, 10, 15 years? I don't think I have that long, Big Yorg. What do you spend all that time in Italy doing anyway? Other than art, I mean. And, uh, again, these options will, uh, they'll give you different dialogue options. I, I think you get different achievements depending on what you choose. Um... Hedonist, Craftsman, Bookworm... Let's go with, uh, Rapscallion. Um, a penchant for getting involved in petty schemes, pranks, minor crimes, and fistfights. Getting into trouble. I got involved in a scheme or two. A bit of mischief. More than a few brawls. Street fighting is sort of a pastime on the Italian peninsula. Just a little fun, really. Sounds like a strange way to pass the time, Andreas. Anyway, I have to get going. Jorg, let's go. Dad's already acting like I'm taking too long, even though I did all the work to get that rock out. See you later, Andreas. Until later. Entrus. Hello, Andreas. Veronica. Martin, please. Can you give me a hand here? Martin. What do you want? I'm keeping an eye on them. That looks a lot like standing there and doing nothing. Hetty. Martin, for Christ's sake, help your cousin. Ah, morning, Andreas. Excuse us. One of the fence rails fell, and the sheep started hopping it. Martin. Idiot. You going to help them? Mind your own business, asshole. <laughs> Martin, that's enough. And Andreas, leave the discipline to my mother. Oh look, there's something going on at top of the Steinosser's place. Who's that on the horse? Looks rich. I don't know, Martin, but Lucky is giving him an earful. Christ, I haven't seen Lucky that worked up since Peter and Clara's wedding when Johan pulled his pants down. Alright, and we get some pictures of all those characters, and uh, a really cute frog with like a beanie on. Knock two of my man's teeth out. You don't want to feel the strength behind a stonemason's anger. Do you think he's a noble? He looks really rich. God damn it, Martin. Stay out of trouble for once. What, Aunt Hattie? Behave yourself. Don't we have enough to deal with right now? 
Andreas, if you wouldn't mind moving your skinny little body up the road, we need to get these sheep under control. Of course. See you later. Good luck. Klaus. Morning, Andreas. How's it going? Morning, Klaus. Another day at the Abbey, another few hours to work on my masterpiece. Good to hear. Are you still coming by for supper tonight? Marie and Bert would love to see you. You really need to see these new woodcuts I have for an Italian edition of Till, You, and Spiegel. And that is the titular character of a popular 15th century book. Till is a prankster, continually exposing the vices and hypocrisy of others. He is also quite skilled at tricking people into smelling, touching, or eating his excrement. I didn't realize Father Thomas let you print books in Italian. Come on, Andreas. He's not that strict. I know he's just trying to protect people from... Uh, witch mania. Oh god. Don't say that, Andreas. We're less than a day's ride from Innsbruck. Which is the capital of the Austrian county of Tyrol and a major stop on the Imperial Road connecting Italy and Bavaria. It is the closest city to Curacao Abbey in Tassing. Notably, it was also the site of witch trials in 1485. No need to get people around here all worked up about the witches again. Besides, don't talk about witches around Father Thomas. Just a bad idea. Good to know. So, supper tonight after Vespers? Uh, we'll see. If not tonight, sometime soon then. See you later, Andreas. See you later. Thomas. God bless you, Master Mailer. I hope your week is going well. Thank you, Father. It's going quite well. I'm just on my way up the hill to get to work. Good. Good, Andreas. I don't recall seeing you at Sunday morning Mass. You understand how important it is for your salvation that you receive Holy Communion, don't you? I do, but I've been working on sketches late at night, and... Andreas, this is about more than your success in this life. There is a na... Oh my, what a blessed day to receive such an illustrious visitor. Master Mailer, this is Lorenz, Baron of Rothvogel, a great lord from the countryside near Worms. And Worms is the prosperous imperial free city in the western part of the empire. Located on the Rhine River, Worms has been the site of many imperial diets. Good to see you, Father Thomas. It is nice to be remembered fondly. I only wish all of your neighbors were as welcoming. Well, yes. What brings you back to our little town? My wife and I were returning from a trip to Venice. We spent a few days in Innsbruck and it was terribly dull. I mean, it has a certain charm common to these alpine cities, but the place was crawling with nobles for the Empire's Diet. An Imperial Diet is an assembly of the three colleges of the Imperial Estates of the Holy Roman Empire, the Prince Electors, the Prince and Dukes, and the representatives of the Imperial Cities. They meet to deliberate on matters of importance to the Empire. The Emperor? Was he there? Did you see him? Oh, briefly. But he was sitting for a portrait at the time. Quite lovely. I didn't want to bother him or the painter. How was Venice, my lord? 
I lived there only a few years ago. Oh, fascinating. Well, the city's Jews now live in their own quarter to the north. The city's artists are still producing wonderful work. Titanian in particular is a god. No offense, father. Of course. Anyway, my wife wanted to stay a bit longer in Innsbruck, and I decided to ride ahead to make a visit to Kaiersau. I heard Father Matthias died shortly after my last visit, of course. Father Matthias was the abbot of Kaiersau before Father Grenau, widely respected by the monks and nuns as well as the people of Tassing, known for his kindness and his love of books. A great loss for the Abbey, and for us all. Indeed. By good fortune, I recently came across a copy of the Historia Tasse he was reading during my last visit. An account of the early history of Tassing. Kairosal's previous abbot, Father Matthias, had a copy. Baron Rothvogel brought another to the Abbey as a gift. Father Matthias was hoping to find a second copy to corroborate the contents of the first. It contains some fascinating details about the history of this place. I'm afraid they might even cause a bit of a scandal. Ah, uh, yes. But, I must be off. There will be plenty of time to discuss Tassing's past later. I commissioned a manuscript from the Abbey through Father Garneau, and I have come to check on his progress. Oh, my lord. If you have come to see your manuscript, you should speak with the young Master Mailer here. It is an honor to meet you, my lord. Andreas is a journeyman artist from Nuremberg. For the next few months, he's also helping in the Abbey Scriptorium. And a scriptorium is a room for writing, illustrating, and illuminating manuscripts. Though typically associated with monasteries, they have disappeared from almost all abbeys by the 16th century. A Nuremberger artist working in an abbey scriptorium? In 1518? Oh, we should talk, Andreas. I must know the story. Of course, my lord. It would be an honor. Wonderful. It's so rare to find someone in the countryside who knows anything about art. Thank you for the introduction, Father Thomas. Come to supper at the Abbey tonight. I'm inviting you to the Abbot's table. Is... did the Abbot invite me? Oh, don't worry about it, Father. Just going to show up after Vespers. What is he going to do? Refuse us? I... Excellent. We will see you then. Miklaus, I'm dismounting. Run ahead of us and take the horses to the Abbey's guest house. I'd like to take my time talking with Master Mailer. I'll meet you there. At once, my lord. So then, a journeyman from Nuremberg. Forgive me for saying so, but you seem a little old to not yet be a master. Are you unmarried? No, I'm not married, but in truth I came to my vocation later than my father and brothers. I was in university for a number of years at Etfurt. And Etfurt is one of the most populous cities in the Empire and is located near its heart. It has been home to a respected university since 1379 and is a center for humanist thought. Etfurt. Wonderful. The same university as Martin Luther. Have you read his works? Tremendous mind. And Martin Luther is a priest and professor of theology at the University of Wittenberg, controversial for his opinions on the church's sale of indulgences to forgive sin, which were recently published and distributed throughout the empire. He says things about the church that should have been said years ago. Might get him into trouble, but he's a brave, brilliant man. Wait, you may have even met him. Did you? You must tell me. Ah, uh, no. He was a few years ahead of me. Still, his ideas do seem fascinating. I agree, wholeheartedly. 
I simply must meet him if I get the chance. I wonder if the good brothers of the Abbey have heard of him. Perhaps they've even read his list of 95 theses against the church. Which is a list of propositions against the church's practice of selling indulgences for the remission of sin, written in 1517 by Martin Luther. Father Matthias was not above having a lively debate. I hope Father Gernot does not disappoint in that regard. But enough about Luther for now. Tell me about your university studies. Forgive me, Baron, but did you attend university? You seem very well educated. Ha, no. My father is merely wealthy enough to have provided me with all the books and tutors a child could ever dream of. I love all knowledge, from Aristotle to Cicero to Ficini and Aramis, and everyone in between and yet to come. I may have misjudged the Baron. It seems he is as well read as any university student. In truth, I am simply happy to speak with another well-educated man. Now then, did you earn your doctorate? I... no I didn't. Only a master's degree. I started working towards a doctorate, but didn't finish. Oh, that's a shame. Well, what was your area of study? Alright, and we can choose between theology, imperial law, or medicine. Gonna go with, uh, imperial law. Law. I suppose I could practice in Nuremberg. I never had much interest in the subject, honestly. A bit dull for my taste. Besides, the Empire is such a mess of jurisdictions. Bavarian law, Rhenish law, Franconian law, nonsense. I'd rather use my money to pay someone who studied the nonsense than learn it myself. You. If I had any faith, I would have prayed you'd never show your face here again. Curse you, Lorenz Rothvogel. Perchetta's dogs tearing you to pieces would be too kind of fate. These rustic communities display a shocking lack of hospitality, don't you think? What was that about? Who knows? By the time I finish guessing, the old crone will probably be dead. Well, what about your early time in university? Each student must study the Trivium and Quadrivium, yes? The Trivium and Quadrivium represent the lower and upper divisions of a classical liberal arts university education. Latin, grammar, logic, and rhetoric form the Trivium. Arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy form the Quadrivium. Did you have a favorite subject? All right, we've got a few options. Um, let's go with Heaven and Earth. Andreas knows a great deal about the constellations, heavenly bodies, and their movement. He is also familiar with various plants and animals from study and personal experience. I love studying the natural world, my lord. Both the heavens above and the wild spaces around us. Formally, I studied as much astronomy as I could. It's incredible how much we've learned from both the Arabs and the Greeks. True, but even now we continue to discover more about what we can see within the celestial sphere. What began as pagan myths to explain our place in the world may help us understand our place in the heavens. And this may seem foolish, but I spent a lot of time in the wilderness learning about plants and animals. Really? Did the libraries of Edfurt not have enough herbals to satisfy your curiosity? I don't mean to malign our most august Greek and Roman authors, but De Materia Medica was written before the coming of Christ, which is a pharmacopoeia or book for creating compound medicines written by Pernandus Diocabla, a Greek physician and botanist who is employed in the Roman army. The five-volume text has been a primary source of botanical information for centuries. Surely there is more that we can learn about plants, insects, and animals by observing them in nature. 
And beyond that, I simply have a love for wild places. While I do not share your academic interest in nature, I must admit that I sometimes enjoy the solitude of a walk in the woods. And your other studies? Was there anything else you excelled at? Let's go with the uh, order. Andreas excelled at rhetoric in university. He is a skilled teacher, persuader, and public speaker. The art of persuasion, naturally. Rhetoric. Ah, I assume you studied the Greeks and Romans both. Yes, Aristotle and Cicero, of course, but also the Christian thinkers like Augustine and Thomas Aquinas. True, we have less use for public discourse than senators did in the Roman Republic. Exactly. The doctors of the church weren't trying to persuade politicians, but to move their mind towards Christian truth. Still, the principles remain largely the same. Invent your arguments, then arrange, style, and internalize them before delivering to your audience. Splendid. Though I suppose an artist has little use for rhetoric, especially in a place like this. Not true. Rhetoric is also an art. And like other forms of art, it should be created for the audience and its purpose. It can be practiced as easily in the streets of a rural town as in the Curia of Rome. Rome. Though outshone by its northern neighbor Florence, Rome is still the seat of power for the Catholic Church and an impressive center for the arts. Well put. Ah, there's the Abbey. I have good memories of this place and of Father Matthias. I was sad to hear of his passing. How did you come to know him? How did you come to know of Kearsal at all? My family have been patrons of Kearsal for, oh, I don't know how many generations. Some years ago I heard that Kearsal still had a wonderful library and artisans. Professional artists have taken over most manuscript production, so I was shocked to find an active scriptorium here. This is as good a place as any to create art. Certainly. Though I'm sure you miss the comforts of Nuremberg when you're stuck in a drafty old abbey like this. I'll get back there soon enough. I'm in no rush. That's good for me, since I still appreciate the abbey's work. I commissioned a manuscript through Father Grenot a year ago. I thought I would stop by and check on the progress. Wait, are you the artist working on it? It's a prayer book with 20 illustrations. I know the work, but no. I do know the artist well, the venerable brother Piero. How venerable. He still has his wits and his skills, if that's what concerns you. Brother Piero has an incredible talent with color. And we can see his face. Then I very much look forward to seeing it. Miklaus, tend to the horses and the baggage. I'm heading up to the abbey. Yes, my lord. Well, let's not keep the abbot waiting any longer. Nuns. Quite unusual for a Benedictine house to have monks and nuns, even if they are separated. Founded in the 6th century, the Benedictines are a Christian monastic order that observes vows of obedience, poverty, chastity, and stability under the rule of St. Benedict of Nursia. The church closed most of them centuries ago. But then, Kairosau is a place out of time in more ways than one. Do you know Mother Cecilia? She seemed to recognize you. We're acquainted, yes. Let's leave it at that. 
Ah, you must be Father Grenot. I am Lorenz, Baron of... Yes, the Baron of Rothvogel. So wonderful to have you here again. We actually did meet on your last visit. Ah, if you say so. I am not good with remembering faces. Please forgive me, my lord, but I wasn't expecting you for another few days. Yes, I know, but I wrote ahead. I just couldn't wait to see my manuscript. I'm sure it's no trouble. Well, I, yes, I mean, no, it's no trouble. Did you want to see it now? Oh, in a moment. I could do with a bit of refreshment, though. May I grab something from the kitchen? Yes, yes, certainly, my lord. I will meet you there. Andreas, I don't know what you are doing with the Baron, but I need you in the scriptorium now. Of course, father. I'm eager to get to work. Then get to work. Shit. I should have asked him for an advance for the Gertner's taxes. Maybe I could just convince Brother Matthew to pay me early. If all else fails, I could liberate some money from the sacristy. Alright, new quest. Find a way to get paid. And this is where we'll be ending part one of our playthrough of Pentiment. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and have an awesome day.